Thank you very much, Sandrine. Israel has achieved Herzl's main objective, establishing a thriving Jewish state. In doing so, creating a world-class entrepreneurial tech sector and earned the title of startup nation. But essential new internal and external challenges have appeared and a new vision must now sustain the country. Israel must achieve Herzl's greater ambition to be a light among the nations. Impact is the way for Israel to achieve this, cap capitalizing on its unique capability to tackle some of the world's most persistent challenges, hunger, illness, education, and climate. Each of us has a role to play in taking it from startup nation to impact nation. It is my privilege to welcome Sir Ronald Cohen, chair of the Global Steering Group of for Impact Investment. still be exhausted by now. You've heard so much. Uh, I want to start by saluting each and every one of you who has come here to celebrate not just the 125th anniversary of Israel, but its future over the next 125 years. When Herzl set out his vision, and I have to congratulate every speaker, starting with Maurice uh, Levy and going through every single speaker uh, who has uh, contributed to our discussions today, on the very deep understanding which has been achieved about what impact holds for the future of Israel. I've read Ad Neuland and I've read The Jewish State. In fact, before I came here, I was holding on the terrace of our home in Tel Aviv a copy of the first edition, Hebrew edition, of The Jewish State, which appeared in 1896, a year before it was discussed in this very city. The huge progress that we have made, as many speakers have said, is nothing short of miraculous. I used to say that venture capital and entrepreneurship, particularly tech entrepreneurship, is the art of the impossible. Well, Israel has cultivated this art. Unbelievably, 51 years after the Congress, as we've heard, the State of Israel was created, and today it's only three years younger than I am. <laughs> and how much has been achieved in my lifetime? It was unthinkable that Israel, by now, could be among the top 20 countries in the world in terms of GDP per capita one of the top countries in the world in terms of its representation on American stock exchanges, 90 Israeli companies versus 110 for Canada and 261 for China. And yet, we see the creation of billionaires. It has the second highest rate per capita of billionaires in any economy in the world, I'll let you guess which is the first one. And yet we see these advancements in our economic position, creating huge challenges for the future of the country. Because the unevenness of the prosperity that has been created divides our different tribes, our secular tribe, is divided within itself between the periphery and the center of the country. Our ultra-Orthodox citizens are living in poverty. 21% live on the poverty line in Israel. And our Arab citizens are similarly left behind. The prosperity has created divisions in the country in terms of well-being, whether it be in the area 
of employment or in the area of health or in the area of education. Differences that create anger and frustration and a sense of injustice that threaten the cohesion of the society and the effectiveness of its political system. And so when we look at Herzl's vision, we see that we achieved the first part of the vision, to create a country capable of defending itself against all odds, and an industry capable of sustaining rising prosperity. But the second part of his vision, the societal part, is still to be achieved. And I want to draw a parallel between Herzl's time and today. Why did Herzl emphasize technology? Because he lived at a time when within a period of 25 years, you had the invention of electricity, of the telephone, of the radar, of the automobile, and of the airplane. And today, the changes that are occurring in the world have played to Israel's strength. When I was involved in 93 in creating the first institutional fund in Israel, Apex Leumi, Bank Leumi, interestingly, was the bank that Herzl founded, it was hard to believe that technology could really be as big as it has become. Can you believe we needed a guarantee from the US government that the investors wouldn't lose their money in order to bring big pension funds and insurance companies to invest in Israel? And where are we today, only 30 years later? More than $10 billion a year are being invested in Israel, two-thirds of which comes from international investors. And so what's happening with technology happened in Herzl's day, and he had the foresight to see that the brain power in Israel, the entrepreneurship, the innovation, the chutzpah, perhaps the chutzpah wasn't so visible at the time when Jews were powerless, living in ghettos with no rights, no justice, and no honor. But the chutzpah can be seen today. There's no doubt about that. And that combination today is what gives Israel the opportunity to achieve much of what we have heard today. Because if we look ahead and we say, how are we going to judge Israel's success over the next 125 years? The answer has to be that we have to build on what we've achieved in industry and on the military front but we have to close the gaps in economic well-being. We have to unite our different tribes with a sense of shared values, which were so crucial in creating the state, which motivated people to sacrifice themselves in order to set it up. And today, Israel is losing that sense of cohesion. The inequalities of pitting our different tribes one against the other, making them feel unfairly treated or even exploited by the other tribes. So we have to reduce the gaps in economic position. We have to unite the tribes. And we have to find a solution to our conflict with our Palestinian neighbors. I have devoted 20 years now in working on the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. I have an office in Ramallah to which I go very frequently. I speak with Palestinian business people and political figures. This conflict can and must be solved. People said that the Irish conflict could never be solved. Well, 
we see that huge progress has been made in doing so. At the end of the day, if we do not help our Palestinian neighbors to build proper lives for themselves, to have the motivation to work hard for their children's future, we will not shift them from looking to the future instead of dealing with the past. And so, if we think of these three objectives as those that are going to spell the success of Israel over the next 125 years, how does Israel, in the changing world we live in today, achieve that? Well, as I was saying, the world is moving in the direction of Israel's strength. Impact is really a change in our economic system, as Aline said and others have uh, said. Kobe and Ernst uh, said the same thing. If we look at what's happening, capitalism is creating the environmental challenges and the social challenges that we face. For 40 years, governments have been talking to one another about solving our environmental challenges, and of course they haven't made any huge progress, because it isn't governments that create environmental pollution, it's companies. And so what Impact is doing now is to say, look, a system, an economic system, which is based only on the measurement of profit and risk cannot be sustained any longer. We have to overthrow the tyranny of profit and put impact by its side to keep it firmly in its place. We have to bring our economies to deliver solutions not to create and aggravate problems. And the good news is we're advancing fast in this direction. The change in values which started with young people and the big difference between this group and the group that we saw uh, and at the first Congress is the average age of the participants. I salute the younger generation of people who are, who are here. If we look at the ability today of a company to make money if it is creating negative impacts, it's virtually non-existent. How many of us in this room would look at a deal where the entrepreneur says, I'm going to build a huge company, but I'm going to pollute the hell out of the atmosphere and I'm going to be using child labor, right? It's over. The change in values has led investors to realize that this is full of implications for the profitability of their investments. As we've heard, $40 trillion of ESG money, $2.5 trillion of impact investment are flowing now to achieve risk, return, and impact. And this change in values is meeting with huge leaps in technology that are as significant as the invention of the microchip. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, augmented reality, huge computing power coming together with the genome and the life sciences generally, transform our ability to deliver impact globally in ways humanity could never previously contemplate. And Israel is a leader in, in doing that. I see entrepreneurs, many of whom are represented in this room and uh, some of whom I, I have backed and I know so many of you in, in the audience, transforming through their entrepreneurship and innovation the worlds of education, of health, of fintech, of clean energy, of water. Every area 
where negative impacts are being created becomes a target today for impact entrepreneurs. And just as the tech revolution was, yet, was led by the young generation, so would the impact revolution be. And the third major force is the force of transparency on the impacts created by companies. An effort I have been involved with at the Harvard Business School for the last three years has published thousands of companies' environmental and social impacts in monetary terms. And my belief is that within the next three to five years, we're going to see companies in many parts of the world having to publish impact statements that show their revenues, their costs, and their different impacts from their operations, from their products, from their employment, and from their supply chain. And if some of you are listening and feeling a bit skeptical, the SEC has already put on the table mandatory publication of every environmental impact created by a company. The organization responsible for financial accounting throughout the whole world, apart from the United States, the IFRS, as it's called, has set up an International Sustainability Standards Board to standardize the measurement, the quantity measurements of both social and environmental impacts. And the EU has already imposed impact transparency on investment vehicles, forcing every investment manager that wants to sell its uh, funds in this 500 million person market to comply with EU regulations on transparency. The train has left the station. And this is the world that Israel is going to thrive in. What Israel has achieved in technology in just 30 years, it can do again, and perhaps even faster, in the world of impact. And if we think about the Jewish people, thank you very much, and their sense of mission, and what we have brought to the world through the Bible and the Ten Commandments, once again, we have the opportunity to do the same. Israel cannot hope to become the most populous nation or the most powerful economy in the world. But it can hope to be the country that makes the largest contribution in terms of its size to solving the vital problems the world faces today and which Israel faces together. My daughter Tamara, who is an impact entrepreneur sitting here with her co-founder, Yuval Summit, when she was asked a year or two ago why she enjoyed living in Israel, having made Aliyah, said, because it's a country that's writing its own history. Let us write Israel's history as impact nation. We are the leaders of this revolution. And just as the 250 people who were in this city 125 years ago saw achievement of their vision, I'm confident that we will once again turn Israel into impact nation. Thank you.